In light of what's happening in Ukraine, let me show you how to make an improvised tourniquet the right way. This is important because massive hemorrhage from the arms and legs is one of the most lethal and preventable injuries that you can have in a war zone. And there are several different myths out there and bad ways to make an improvised tourniquet. Let me know how you would do it in the comments below. Time is essential because you bleed out in minutes. So you wanna find materials that are readily accessible. Patient's t-shirt, your t-shirt, you can rip it out in strands by cutting cotton shirts this way and then ripping it out, out in strands. You want those strands to be at least, at least two to three inches wide because what happens when you take material like this, cotton, and pull it tight, it becomes a lot thinner. And when it's taut, it should be at least 1.5 inches wide. That allows the compression of that area to be adequate. Next, you're gonna to wanna to find a windlass, something like a stick that won't break. Something made out of metal, something made out of wood, or if you really are struggling to find someone and time is key, everyone has a shoe on it. Most shoes are not compressible to a certain extent, so this can be a windlass that you can turn around and incorporate in your improvised tourniquet. Tie a square knot two to three inches above the wound. Incorporate your windlass. Square knot on top of the windlass to secure before you turn. Now that it's in place, turn it until the bleeding stops and there's no pulse. Use your second piece of material to secure that windlass in place. Simple square knot as well. All right, and mark the time. So that's a correct improvised tourniquet with things that you would find on the victim. If you wanna learn more, give us a follow.